It's a great time on Marquette's campus. Basketball season is just around the corner and you can hear those trick-or-treaters at your front door asking for candy. This may be the best time to be a Marquette basketball fan. And this is Marquette, Marquette Basketball Bas Weekly. <laughs> Welcome to Marquette Basketball Weekly. I'm your host, Brad Galley. We're here at the annual Golden Eagle Fish Fry Dinner at the Alumni Memorial Union. Now, there's been a lot going on since we last met. Marquette Madness came and gone. The guys have been practicing in full swing now. And former Golden Eagle Wesley Matthews suited up for his first ever NBA game. Wes made the Jazz's 16-man roster and saw action against Denver on national television. In five minutes of play, Matthews took only one shot but by suiting up, he became the 43rd Marquette player to appear in an NBA regular season contest. Coming up later in the show, our Todd Warner has an exclusive interview with FoxSports.com senior college basketball writer Jeff Goodman about his outlook on the Golden Eagles for this upcoming 2009-2010 campaign. Plus, in our Golden Eagles Spotlight interview this week, I talked with Director of Basketball Operations Bart Lundy about his experience so far with the Golden Eagle program. But first, Michael Watring talked with Todd Rosiak, who writes for the Journal Sentinel every week about Marquette basketball. He knows this team inside and out better than anyone out there, and he's had a chance to watch these Golden Eagles practice on a first-hand basis. I had a chance to catch up with Marquette men's basketball beat writer Todd Rosiak. Todd has an all-access ability to go behind the scenes of Marquette basketball. He talked about how Buzz Williams has changed from year one to year two. The practice that I've seen, it's just a lot more teaching. You've got to slow it down a little bit. Whereas last year, the year before, you could just kind of roll the ball out and let those guys go, you know. Uh, Coach Monarch made a good point. He said it was like playing, it was like coaching pros. You know, they had been around so long, they knew what to do at pretty much all times. So if you don't have that anymore, you just got to get back to the coaching and the teaching aspect of it and then hope over time they pick it up and then you can kind of scale that back and let them play a little bit more. So and which of these newcomers are blossoming? We saw Jerron and Dwight really seem to exposing themselves to being good players. Are those the guys that you expect to carry that forward or is there other guys? Yeah, I would think those two guys initially are going to be uh, big time contributors because uh, they need to be quite simply. You know, they don't have a lot of depth at those positions and they're going to have to step in right away and make some major contributions. I think a guy like uh, Darius Johnson Odom, who's coming off the injury, he's a little bit of a question mark right now, but when you look at the, the skill set that he has and the things that he can do and that he can bring to the table, you know, there's a spot for him. And now, whether it's going to be coming off the bench last year, kind of like Jimmy Butler did as an energy guy, you know, kind of pro provide a boost off the bench that remains to be seen, but, you know, if his foot continues to respond and he can stay healthy, he's another guy that I think you can expect pretty big things out of. And moving away from all that, you look at Lazar Hayward, who is essentially the man this year. He played in the university games over the summer. And without the big three from last year, how is he responding to being this team leader? I think he's enjoying it. You know, you look at he's a, he's a really relaxed guy, you know, uh, laid back kind of guy. But when you get him in the situations behind closed doors in practice, if things aren't going the way he liked them to go or the way Buzz would like them to go, not afraid to step in there and raise his voice and let the guys know that, you know, this is this is not working out, this is not the way we do things at Marquette, and he'll let those guys know. And I know that the younger guys, everybody respects him, and especially I think the younger guys know because he's been through the battles. He's done pretty much everything you can do, uh, you know, as far as an individual player uh, in the Big East. He keeps mentioning the fact that it's just going by too fast. You know, you can't believe it's his senior year, and I think he's really got an appreciation for what, what he's gone through so far and what he's going to go through this season also. Reporting from the Al McGuire Center, I'm Michael Watrang, MUTV Sports. As members of the Blue and Gold Club fill their plates at the annual fish fry, it's hard not to think of the children across the world that will be filling their bags with candy on Halloween night. I spoke with a number of the men's basketball players about their favorite memories of Halloween's past. When I was uh, 12, I was back in uh, Venezuela, and I, I was a Spider-Man, right? I, I stayed in an apartment, so like, I, I jumped from the first floor of my oh. apartment, yeah, and uh, I got, I mean, I didn't break any, I didn't break anything, but I was, I was, I was hurt, I was crying. Favorite Halloween memories? Robert, we will start with you. I don't know if mine's a favorite, it's more of an embarrassing. Uh, 
my mom decided she wanted me to be uh, Peter Pan, I guess, <laughs> when I was uh, four. Wait, wait, what? No, you weren't four. You were probably older than that. No, Don't man, try was, and put the age I down. I was four. Maybe five. No, see, no, it was no, maybe five. No. He probably was older I was than young, that. had no choice. I'm now let's send it over to Todd Warner for a recap of the Haunted Hoop scrimmage. Down here at the Al McGuire Center, the scrimmage just ended. Down here with Donnie Dwyer and Brian Hoffman. Uh, Donnie, we'll start with you first. Which one player really stood out to you uh, or after the scrimmage? Well, after the scrimmage, Chris O'Toole, we saw him at Marquette Madness. He had a great Marquette Madness going against Usafa, and today he had seven points at big boards, and he's definitely going to contribute at the, at the, at the uh, low post spot during the middle of the season. They're definitely going to need a low post presence. Yeah. Now, uh, Hoffman, which one player did you really think uh, stood out? You know, Ty, I said it before, I'll say it again. Dwight Bice, he needs to be a critical part of this offense. If there's going to be any continuity throughout the regular season, we Marquette needs someone at the guard to lead this offense. I feel Dwight Bice can be that guy who can uh, who can lead this team and possibly have a successful season. He's definitely going to need uh, to score to take a little pressure off Lazar. But personally, for me, I look at Darius Johnson Odom. This guy coming off injury really had a great game. Buzz Williams called him the most athletic player on the team, and he definitely showed that tonight. Had a lot of good athletic moves, some layups. It would be interesting to see if he could play the point guard position. But, Donnie, overall, what are your thoughts after after Madness, now a couple weeks of practice, what do you think of this team's uh, progression so far? I think they've progressed pretty well. I think the guard play is phenomenal. Their defense, they're very quick on the ball. Uh, the point guards have been playing really well. And just the overall flow, they they can score inside, and they're playing really well de well defensively. So I think after a few practices, they played really well. They definitely played well. Hoff, what are, you, what are your thoughts? You know, I noticed that as the game, as the scrimmage went on, the flow got a lot better. And what I absolutely love is the pace is exactly the same as it was when we had James and McNeil and Matthews. When Marquette had those three players, it was fast. It's just as fast as it is now. I am very interested to see if, it could, if how much better it will get as we get into Big East play and through, you know, throughout the regular season. Big East play is going to be big. But personally, I thought that Jerron Maiman played a great game down low, getting some rebounds, getting down low, scoring some points. But this team really looks like they're gelling, and that's what they need to do. They've got a lot of talent, a lot of talent on the floor, and that really needs to progress uh, the next few weeks. they got their big season opener uh, exhibition against MSOE next Saturday. That's going to do it for us down here. Now we're going to send it to Chris Galke. With so much attention being geared toward the new faces of the Marquette basketball team this year, many of those familiar faces from the past year have garnered little attention thus far. One player in particular is David Kubion. Now I caught up with David back on media day and asked him what he thought his role was going to be this season. I don't really know what that role is going to be, but what I can tell you is that, you know, I'm, I'm in work, I've been working really hard and, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just going to try to help, you know, try to help the team and, Hopefully, you know, try to try to get us wins. You know, try to you know try to win. And that's that's basically what I'm thinking. And I don't I don't know. Right now, it's kind of hard to tell. You know, what what my role is going to be. And with the injury to Junior Kadugan, I also asked David if he saw himself playing more point guard this year. I think uh, I think I'm going to have to help because uh, Junior, you know, Junior got hurt. He was, uh, you know, he's a natural point guard, and you know, he's a really good player. So now I think I'm going to have to play a little, you know, I'm going to play the combo. I'm a combo, so I'm going to have to play the one and the two. But, you know, that's how many, you know, how many minutes I play at the point, how many minutes I play at the two, that's just, that's up to the coach, you know, it's up to coach boys. But, you know, I think I'm, I'm ready to, to, to play whatever, you know, whatever he needs me to play. Lazar Hayward also shared his thoughts on David Kubian and the lack of attention he gets. However, he feels this is a good thing. No one really talks about uh, Kubi, and, and I kind of like that because Kubi is a guy that loves to prove people wrong, and, and he's, you know, he's, a, he's a guy that's willing to fight for anyone, and he knows that we need him, and I think it's good that no one, you know, that people is kind of forgetting about him because it's just going to show how, show his character and show, you know, what, what he's been doing all summer and how he's been getting ready for the season. What the season holds in store for David Kubian is anybody's guess. But with the start of the season getting closer each day, it is safe to say David is looking to surprise many people this year. Reporting from the Al McGuire Center, Chris Galke, MUTV Sports. Hey, this is Darius Johnson Odom. This is Eric Williams. This is Chris. This is Dwight. This is David Kubian. This is Jimmy Butler from the Marquette basketball team. Stay tuned for more Marquette Basketball Weekly.